Japanese art. It has a history of over 10,000 years. In this small island country, unique art forms have been developed in every era. That history lives on to this day. Hello, I'm Megumi Sasaki. I was born and raised in Japan, but I've lived in New York City for more than 20 years. I'm a documentary filmmaker and have made films about contemporary art. But right now, I'm so fascinated to learn more about Japanese art and its history of over 10,000 years. Art Time Travel. The essence of Japanese beauty is said to be in the kazari or decoration. Kazari can be seen not just in art, but throughout the daily lives of the Japanese. Kazari was even incorporated onto the battlefield. And there, it reached the smallest most minute of worlds. Seisho Nagon, a poet from 1,000 years ago, expressed the Japanese aesthetic this way. All small things are beautiful. Today's theme is small things. I love this idea. Actually, there is a place in Ebisu I always drop by whenever I come to Tokyo. So I'm gonna take you there right now. Hello, Takano-san, so great to see you. Sasaki-san, nice to see you. This is Miss Naoko Takano, my favorite nail artist. In this episode, we'll begin by exploring nail art. Japan is a leader in this art form. Designs created by the detail-oriented Japanese are admired around the world. Among Japan's nail artists, Naoko Takano is one of the best. With clients including stars like Jennifer Lopez, her work is known internationally. She is often featured in top fashion magazines around the world, showing her incredibly detailed designs for the fingertips. I believe the Japanese tradition of decoration and the love of tiny things both exist in Naoko Takano's work. She has now created over 5,000 designs. And here's my favorite, nail art with a Moroccan feel. So, how do you always get this new idea about new design? I look to the latest fashion trends and imagine what would be necessary to create nail art from them. I don't make exactly what I see, but instead input everything in my mind, then make designs without referring to the original. Styles and trends look different on a fingernail, so I interpret it in my mind pick out certain elements, then restructure the design by adding my own colors and uh, decorations. Is there any time that you have a struggle to come up with a new idea? When that happens, I visit various places to look at material. I also look to the works of different artists. Her brushes are specially made, 
by a craftsman in the Kansai area, with close attention to bristle length and firmness. Naoko's skill is evident, even in the smallest of dots. Applying the perfect amount of pressure, a beautiful design appears before you know it. And on another nail, a different accent. This precise handcrafted work continues. All done. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Wow. I love the world Naoko creates with her fine technique and beautiful sensibility. Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> to me, Takamu-san's nails are more like an art. It's a site-specific art in terms of limited space and time. So it's more like a purchasing art rather than just gets nailed on. All small things are beautiful. This aesthetic value must have given birth to various works of art. I've come to Kyoto in search of Japanese art that may have some kind of connection to nail art. My guide is art historian and professor Yuji Yamashita. Professor Yamashita, hello. Hello. Long time no see. I have something to show you. Hmm. I just bought this new art. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Wait a second. I need to put on my glasses. Ah, nail art. Yes, ah. this is a very site-specific, ah, nah. time-limited art. It's quite detailed. And I'm looking for something in Japanese mm. art that has common with this nail art. Mm -hmm. When I heard we were featuring nail art, it brought to mind something called cloisonné. Why do you think cloisonné mm. has something common with this mm. nail art? This nail art, as you can see, is incredibly detailed, almost to the extreme. And I felt cloisonné was similar in its pursuit of detail. I especially recommend the cloisonné from 100 years ago, which we can actually view. Let's go there now. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Let's go. This memorial museum displays the work of cloisonné artist Namikawa Yasuyuki. This structure is very distinctly Kyoto. Yes, this is a beautiful, beautiful building. How old is this? When was this built? This was built in 1894 and was Namikawa Yasuyuki's home and studio. This is Namikawa-san. Oh, he's so handsome. Yes, he is. <laughs> Very exotic looking. He doesn't look like Japanese. And here is the cloisonné I wanted to show you. It's beautiful color. It's small and charming, isn't it? Yes, really. It's similar to nail art. I think you can say the size is part of the charm. Mm. Many of Namikawa's works are small enough to fit on the palm of my hand. Surprisingly, even the kiln found in his studio was small. Let's go back to the era in which Namikawa's works were born. In the late 19th century, the samurai era ended, 
and Japan began communicating with the outside world. The cloisonné industry was supported by the government as a way to gain foreign currency. Namikawa is credited with elevating the craft of cloisonné into an art. Namikawa's work uses a method called wired cloisonné. First, a sketch is drawn onto the copper foundation. Then, thin silver wires are attached to create the contours of the drawing. It takes a lot of skill to attach the silver wires to a curved surface. Enamel is then applied carefully inside the silver wires. Then the work is placed in the kiln, producing brilliant colors. The colors of each leaf and the shadows are all seen in extreme detail. This is supreme craftsmanship. At the Paris Exposition of 1900, Namikawa's work was awarded a gold medal. Even now, the name Namikawa stands for highest grade cloisonné. Also, a certain color was crucial in creating Namikawa's world. Namikawa's works are all wonderful. But especially these wisteria flowers. I'm very fond of them. The wisteria flowers are white and purple, and the leaves are green. But what makes the colors stand out is the black of the background. Mm, this is black. This black glaze is actually unique to Namikawa. A black this deep had always been difficult to produce. And only after Namikawa developed the right mixture did it become popular. It's not a simple black. Depending on the angle, it can almost look blue. I thought that was a dark, dark blue. Uh, so, mm. Mm. It's not just technique, but also a reflection of his incredible taste. I think this kind of black is just on a different level from other cloisonné. I see. Mm. Oh, it'd be great to show this cloisonné to the nail artist. I love to. I wonder how she feels about it. How, how, you know, what she found. Um, I wonder how what kind of inspiration she can get from this. I think there's a lot here she could refer to. Yes. Even though they were separated by a hundred years, Namikawa and Naoko seem to share a certain Japanese temperament. In fact, cloisonné and nail art have something in common historically. To begin, cloisonné originated over 3,500 years ago in ancient Egypt. The oldest cloisonné are the decorated burial accessories of the royal family. From there, it went on to Europe, where it decorated churches in place of jewels as a way to express the authority of Christianity. 
Cool Muscle Knit Technique.